Hey, welcome to this video. There is one question which I get quite a lot. Is my JavaScript code secure? Because you probably saw before that if you open the developer tools on a page created by you, and it's the same for other pages, by the way, you can inspect the JavaScript code there. In the Chrome developer tools, you can simply go to sources and boom, you see all the JavaScript code of that project. So all the JavaScript code running in the browser. But doesn't that mean that your project is insecure? Let me answer this question in this video. So we can inspect all the JavaScript code and this is a very simple Angular application here. Now in the sources tab of the Chrome developer tools, we can see the JavaScript files that were loaded as part of this website here. And this website happens to use Angular. So what we see here in the end is the compiled Angular code. Because we obviously, in case you know Angular, we write Angular with TypeScript and a lot of cool features. But in the end, all of that gets compiled to JavaScript code that runs in the browser, which doesn't support TypeScript, for example. So here we get the compiled JavaScript code. And in there, in the end, we see all the code we wrote. In the main.js file here, for example, if we scroll through it, we could find some snippets of our app, some code which belongs to our app, which we wrote just compiled to JavaScript. Now I got a very simple app here. I got a login screen, can also switch to the sign up screen, got some validation in place. And if I do sign up, nothing will work as of now because there's one thing I still have to add. I'll use Firebase here, but you could use any backend. What I do have to add here in the case of Firebase is my API key. And for that, I created a Firebase project. But again, that could be the case for any backend. You might need some API key to send requests there. Or you've got some other part, some other information in your code where you're not sure if you can share that. So let's work on Firebase here quickly. I already created a project. Here it is. And in that project, I won't do anything here. I just want to enable authentication. So in authentication, let's turn this on like this. And again, not really related to Firebase. It's just a convenient to use dummy backend here where I don't need to write a lot of code. I need my API key then. So this key, let me copy that and add it here. We'll replace that API key with that. With that replaced, what I can do is I can go back to my Angular app and let me open the console now. In there, I can now start uh, creating users. So I can create a user here with test.test.com. Let's pick a password, sign up, it's loading, and I'm authenticated. This also is a success response sent by Firebase. And if I go back to Firebase and I have a look at my users, I can see that user there. With that user created, if I reload the app and I'm therefore locked out because I have no mechanism to keep me locked in, I can log in again with the same credentials. Oh, I should be able, but I had a wrong password, I guess. Yeah, so it works. So this is all working, but what am I trying to show you here? Well, obviously it's all about that API key. That is information which any user of our app can access in the running app and not just us. So here, if I go to sources again, in the main JS file, this is where our code lives. Let's search for API in there. And indeed, if I increase that, we see here's some code, which in the end holds these links. And there we can see that API key. And any user of this app can see that. Now here it's particularly easy to read because I'm still in development mode. In production mode, it would look a bit different. And we can quickly have a look at another app for that. Why not at the Firebase console, which also uses a lot of JavaScript. There, if I open the sources tab, we also find some code in there. Now let me quickly grab a promising file. Say this file doesn't really matter. Then you see this is how it would look like in a uh, production build. So all the variable names are shortened and all the white space is removed because this still is JavaScript code that executes without issues. The browser can read that. For users, it's harder, but even in that version, this URL would still be what it is. This can't be hidden. It won't be hidden. The browser can't hide this because the browser parses this and it's part of what gets shipped to the browser. So every user of this page can access this data. Now that leads us to the final question. Is this a problem? And the answer is no. 
Not necessarily, at least. You should definitely not put anything into your JavaScript code which is absolutely uh, confidential, which users must not see, like your root password for your Firebase account. You don't want to put that in here. The API key is something different. With the API key, and that of course is not only the case for Firebase, but for most API or all API keys you use on any API, with that key alone, no one can access your Firebase account. They don't have your password and that API key is not even your username. So people can't access the account. What they can do, of course, is they can grab that URL, that entire URL, and add this login and sign up to their own page using your API. Now, is that an issue? It depends. You can have an API which should be public, which you want other users to use. And then this is perfectly fine. If you're saying, hey, I got my Firebase project and I only want to use it from my Angular app and not from any app, well, then you can lock down access. You can do that in Firebase. You can set up a API whitelist to be precise. You can do that in the Google Developer Console not the Google Play console, but the Google API console to be precise. There, what you can do is you can visit that credentials page and on the credentials page, you can load your Firebase project here on the top with this dropdown and there you see that API key. And on that API key, if you click on it, we need the browser key here, then you can restrict it to certain IP addresses or domains. So this is a way for you to control which IP addresses or domains can send requests to this API with that key. And if the request is coming from another page, it will get blocked. And you have similar mechanisms for other solutions or if you're creating your own API, you simply have to add the logic to have this extra filter if you want that lockdown. So long story short, if you got information which gives direct access to your account, like your password or your email address or stuff like that, don't put it into your JavaScript code, into your front end facing JavaScript code, I should say. For Node.js, it's fine. If you get other things which only grant access to an API, but not to your account, you might want to grant that access to everyone. If you don't, set up some filtering logic which uh, uses an IP whitelist, uh, for example, to lock down access. Now, if you get some information which you need to use uh, from your front end, for example, I had a use case where I needed uh, a token where I needed to sign up users to my newsletter. And that token actually was not something I wanted to expose to other users because with the token, anyone could target my newsletter API and could send requests to it to add users to it without the consent of these users. The problem is I also couldn't lock down access through a whitelist because my newsletter provider, the service I was using, didn't offer such a feature. So what I did is I wrapped it into some server-side code. I created an AWS Lambda function, but you can of course also create your own API with Node, PHP, whatever you need. And there I sent that request to my newsletter service. And with that, I had to send a request to my cloud function to my AWS Lambda function and that would then forward the request and I could lock down the access to my Lambda function. So I created my own wrapper. That is basically what I wanted to say. And this is also some creative way you can work around this issue if you have an API which doesn't give you a native lockdown mechanism. So I hope this was helpful and this clarifies this question of whether it's a problem that people can read your JavaScript code. They can read it, but if you do it right, they can't do anything with that. And by the way, if you're worrying about people stealing your logic, yes, they can do that. But for one, the production code is really hard to read, so it's not that much fun. And two, yeah, people can steal it. But your app shouldn't be great all because of your complex browser JavaScript code. Your core business logic will always reside on the server. Any machine learning or whatever you got there, that will be on the server. Your front-end JavaScript code is always about creating pleasant user experiences, handling user interaction, stuff like that. And if that is your most valuable asset, you can't hide that, unfortunately, but it also shouldn't be that easy to clone it. And there should be more to your product than your browser site JavaScript code.